Welcome to the Health Science Coach Podcast. My name is Drew Garner. I am a health science and physical education teacher here at Turner High School. My objective is to provide information to students about different healthcare careers and explain how these professionals got to where they are in their careers. Thanks for spending some time with us today. Now let's dig in. Today we get the pleasure of meeting with Mindy Nielsen. She is a direct support specialist with Johnson County, uh, Kansas Developmental Support. Welcome, Mindy. How are you today? I'm great. Um, so I wanted to get you on here today to kind of give us some uh, explanation and talks about what the city of Johnson County is able to do with uh, their direct support programs for members of the community. So um, Johnson County Developmental Supports, what we do is provide supports for adults with developmental disabilities and intellectual disabilities. So um, JCDS, we have case management, we have residential programs, we have day service programs, we have, um, let's see, community job programs. So like, you know, if people are interested in working in the community in our day service programs we have all sorts of different stuff we have people who who work in our day service center we have people who go into the community and work we have enclaves that work at other businesses really you know it's all about the person and whatever their good life is and whatever they choose to do with their life and what makes them happy we really just try to provide the supports that that they need in order to make that happen Okay, that's awesome. So being able to, those the adults with the disabilities, being able to help them live a uh, productive adult lifestyle. Absolutely. Good. Um, so what is a kind of like a, a day in the life of, or a week in the life of a direct support specialist? Okay. So I'm going to kind of come at it from the day service side. That's where I've always worked at. I have not worked in our residential program um the day service program is you know more of a monday through friday you know eight to four kind of a thing so that's kind of the schedule for that a residential would be you know evenings overnights weekends type of situation so regardless of where you work you're gonna have personal care type stuff that needs done bathroom showers we do um catheters we do uh, insulin, we do, we pass medications, we, you know, all of those kind of things that you might think that maybe a CNA would do or a CMA or we have nursing delegated tasks. So we kind of work under our nurse's license. We have an RN and two, three, three LPNs now that work for us. So we kind of work under their license. So that's how we're able to pass meds and do all of those things that you wouldn't really think that just ordinary Joe like me, you know, would be doing and supporting people in doing. So of course there's training and all that. So there's definitely a lot of personal care type things that you're going to need. You know, it depends on who you're supporting and what their needs are. Um, let's see. In day services, you're also going to be, if somebody wants to work, if you kind of think of maybe working in a factory or, you know, working on an assembly line or something, you know, we generally what we do is kind of put together medical kits is what a lot of the work is that our folks do at our main center. So um, let's see, we put together blood kits or saliva kits or COVID kits, you know, just all of the bits and pieces that need to go in it. So as any supervisor in one of those situations, you're doing the training of the job, you're doing surplus and damage of the job, you're doing inventory, you're packing skids, you're lifting boxes, you're packing boxes, you're, you know, all of that kind of, I don't know, warehouse type work. Right. And then, you know, checking for your kind of quality control, all of the, the stuff that you're putting together. So in day services for the work side, there's a lot of that as well. We also have uh, retirement groups. So, you know, think about you know your grandparents what do what do they do when they're retired maybe they go to the community center maybe they go swimming they, maybe they go to play bingo with the other seniors whatever it is you know we support them in taking them to do those things if they need that support um let's see we also have um 
well, retirement and then different what we call like life enrichment groups um, that we have in the building. We also provide some of those supports in the homes, which I can kind of tell you about those also. Yeah, so yeah. when I say the word activity, I don't mean um, only bingo. I don't mean playing games, putting puzzles together. When I say activity, I mean really anything that you do during your day is an activity, whether it's you know, taking a shower. There's a lot of steps and pieces that go into that. Maybe you are playing bingo. Maybe you're doing a craft. Maybe you're exercising. You know, really, it's anything that you do during your day. Mm -hmm. So we, in our retirement and in our life enrichment groups, we have, oh, we also have a volunteer group that, that focuses kind of on volunteer opportunities. So, you know, we're just doing all sorts of stuff. But um, so really any activities that that the folks that you support are interested in, we help make that happen. You know, we right. make the contacts, we get the parts and pieces, we just really anything, um, we drive them places, you know, any anything that they want to do, we try to make that happen. It might be the movies, it might be swimming. Um, we've got people that we support maybe who use a wheelchair and maybe don't have the the best um control over some of their appendages so you know getting them in a swimming pool like that might be kind of a bucket list thing for them and we can do that we can make that happen so that's kind of like the the day stuff i guess there's also um residential the folks who might do evenings overnights kind of stuff weekends so they really do most of the doctor's appointments so you're taking people to the doctors, you're helping advocate at the doctors. Uh, well, there, you know, physical therapy, we do physical therapy stuff with people. We have a OTPT on staff as well, who, you know, will help train us in ways to help um, people get stronger in their arms. You know, like if they use a triangle to like pull up in bed. I It would take me like years probably to tell you everything that we do. Yeah. So if you, if you think about every single thing that you do from when you get out of bed in the morning until you go to sleep. Yeah. Our job is to help support you to do that as independently as you can with you having the most control over all of those bits and pieces that you can. And I mean, really, that's kind of what it is. Yeah. And yeah. if you think, you know, we're supporting people with disabilities, we uh, we have we support a lot of people who have mental health concerns or issues all so you know it's probably going to be a little bit more difficult for them than me and you to do those things right yeah so that's and, what we're there for yeah just all overall whole whole life support basically yeah absolutely so you studied psychology as an undergraduate degree where'd you go uh, to school at i went to baker okay right down the road here in yeah. baldwin how did you kind of pick psychology as a pathway coming out of high school? Well, I guess I've always, like my friends always kind of came to me, hey, I've got this problem going on, you know, and just kind of bounced ideas or would come to me for advice, I guess, kind of like a fixer. So yeah. I don't know, I just kind of thought that would be cool. Yeah. And, you know, my I had intended um, with my degree to go on and like, a therapist or a psychiatrist or psychologist but you know I didn't and we have to do a practicum which I think probably most colleges do now and I went and did that with a therapist oh my goodness gracious let me tell you I was sitting there and I was like oh, all these people do for hours and hours is complain so that was just not the life for me I cannot sit in a chair and take notes and be like like that was just not for me so yeah. That helped me, you know, realize what I didn't want, which is also good. So, yeah. yeah. Um, so studying psychology at Baker, what were some of the, the classes that you took that kind of projected you on your pathway that you are now? Well, the pathway that I ended on is just so random and different from what my psychology degree, I guess, because I was in, in college, I was really more focused. We did like psychology of personality was like one of mine that I really, really liked. And, um, you know, one of the papers we had to write, we had to analyze a famous person's 
personality and all of that. And I think I I did like, I don't know, Jimi Hendrix or one of the doors or something. So um, that was really cool to kind of see what makes a person kind of tick. So I did kind of like that and why someone would choose to do the things or not do the things that that they're doing. Um, so I did like that. And so that also made me think, oh, well, I could be a therapist because I'm just going to psychoanalyze everybody. Um, I really also enjoyed the cognitive behavioral therapy stuff that we did. So kind of, you know, putting meaning to why we do the things we do, the behavior that we have. So that's really kind of cool. Um, but really, I think the most that I got out of one of my classes for what I kind of do now is when we were doing, um, oh gosh, what was it called? Research, design, and analysis. Very fancy, right? Yeah. So that was, um, we we would do like like a science experiment you, you know you think back to fifth grade with your with your hypothesis and all these things so you know it was really kind of that but i was using different kinds of techniques to be able to to um manipulate people's behavior right so learning you know antecedents behaviors consequences positive reinforcement negative reinforcement like all of that stuff you you might have heard all of those words that you learn in, you know, intro to psych. Really, I think is the the biggest thing that I go back to and, you know, how you can change the environment to help support either support more positive behaviors mm -hmm. out of someone. And a behavior is, you know, anything that we do, any right. anything. It's sometimes in our field we say, oh, they had a behavior. So they mean like a tantrum or an outburst or a but I'm like, you know, everyone has behavior. I'm behaving right now. Um, so I think really that and and understanding that sometimes, like if I'm seem to be upset with you, I'm probably not upset with you. I might have had some kind of like setting event that happened. So understanding that process was was really, really helpful in what I do now. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so with your career, uh, you've been there 17 years, is that correct? 17, eight, almost eight, 18, I don't know, forever. <laughs> right. Well, once you kind of get out of out of college and into that profession, you know, for so long, it, the years kind of all pile up on each other. I know, I can't believe it's been so long. <laughs> what is your, what is one thing that you really love about your daily uh, career? <sighs> Let's see. I think, I mean, I just love the people that I support. You know, I probably shouldn't say that. I shouldn't say that I love them, but I really do. I mean, I spend more time with the people that I support than I do with my own family, you know? And I think that's really important, you know, to to love what you do. And, it, and it's like, it's unconditional love, you know? Um, I've had parents who will, so I do support adults, but they often have parents as well that are very involved. So um, I've had parents who um, her husband, dad had passed away. And like after the kids, I was the next phone call, you know, just because I'm such a part of their family, kind right. of, you know. So um, that is fantastic. Um, I love seeing people learn new things. Lots of times you'll be like, you'll hear, oh, they can't do that. We've tried that before. They can't do that. Well, fine, but that was before and this is now. So yeah. you know, really trying to help someone learn something new, especially if it's something that they really want to do, like, you know, somebody really wants to go swimming or uh, we had, we do virtual day services now. So we have a lot of stuff on Zoom and people Zoom in and we'll learn about something or Maybe we'll play bingo. Maybe you never know what we're going to do. We have someone who is really interested in police officers. So he wanted to tell everyone about that. So his staff, his direct support professionals just kind of recorded him, you know, asked him questions and he brought stuff in badges and stuff to show. So even, you know, something like that, he was so excited to be able to make that video so that he could share that with all of his friends and everyone else that zoomed in with us. So 
you know, just things like that. And, um, you know, like if someone's having a rough day, you know, just being that person that they that they feel comfortable with, with you know, coming to, to to talk to me or, you know, just help them feel better. That that's I mean, really what it is, just seeing the people that you support. Develop and grow and yeah. uh, person. Yeah, absolutely. I kind of feel that same way throughout high school, you know, having having kids that are freshmen and then see them as a junior, senior maturing, yeah. developing into healthcare career programs that we have um, is pretty cool to see. Uh, and then I just interviewed a girl uh, yesterday who I had in class and graduated from Turner in 17. And she's now working as a nurse at Children's Mercy. And it's kind of cool just to see that whole process and development uh, kind of go through. Um, what did it come Some of these people for 18 years, you yeah. know, that's like older than the students that are going to be watching this. That's, you know, I started at JCDS when I was 22. And so I had people, you know, that I was supporting that were, you know, my age. Right. And, you know, now we're like middle-aged men and women. So, I mean, I'm so different from when I was 22 until now I'm 41, maybe. So, I don't know. And just, I'm completely a different person, completely different area of my life. And so are the people that I support. And that's, that's really cool, too. Yeah. So, you get them for like four years. And I've had, you know, like, gosh, decades with yeah. people to see them grow and develop and it's just really awesome that's pretty cool um throughout that time like you said being able to see them grow and develop throughout their life you know almost 20 years there um what's an accomplishment that you feel really proud of i know that you uh just recently won uh, a professional award uh in this year i believe correct yes yeah yeah it was anchor I wish I could tell you what that means. Um, it's our kind of our national, I don't know, group, our national, I don't know what the word is. Association, right? Asso oh, yes, thank you. Our, yeah, national kind of association, ANCOR, A-N-C-O-R. And every year they choose one DSP from each state. So there's 50 and I was Kansas. So that was really kind of exciting. and. You know, you think you're making a difference and you think that you do a really good job at, at the things that you do every day. And, you know, lots of times it's kind of under the radar and nobody really knows that I did all of these things. But and you don't really need, you know, your horn tooted or whatever. But it is kind of nice to every now and again kind of be like, well, I guess I am doing a really good job because, you know, I've been recognized for it. So kind of that general reassurance of, yes, I am doing something that's beneficial to other people. Yes, absolutely. Um, in your career or, you know, maybe in college or early, late high school, do you have anything you regret not doing? Yes, so that was definitely one thing that I did want to talk to you guys about. So I'm also the volunteer coordinator at JCDS, and you can start volunteering at the age of 16 with us, just to let you know. So that's one thing is, um, you know, really getting more involved, getting involved in this earlier. Because, uh, you know, I didn't know it was a thing like, you know, I saw people in and out of the, the special ed room or, you know, whatever. But I didn't really think anything of it. You know, as far as I was concerned, they were just another student that needed, you know, more stuff than I did, I guess. And you just don't really think about it, I guess. At least way back when I was in school there, it was we were still kind of separate um now i think there's a lot more inclusion which is fantastic absolutely and just well first of all knowing that that this was a thing that you could even do so this is great that you're doing this um but then also yeah definitely getting involved sooner i know we we do have a lot of folks who you can work here once you're 18 so i know we have a lot of folks even as adult like older adults, not 18 year old adults, right. but, you know, going to college, they might work the evenings or I mean the overnights or they might work the weekends. And we do have shifts available for that. And it starts at 15 something an hour. And there's a $500 sign on bonus right now. You know, I'm just letting you all know this. Um, so, you know, just getting involved, you know, even earlier and yeah. not only for. For 
the job because it's wonderful and you're just going to fall in love and just love it and be here forever. But also working for Johnson County government, we're part of the government. So, you know, the benefits and, you know, you could start building up that retirement, you know, when you're 18, not something you think about, but, you know, when you're 40, however old I am now, you're really going to be like, oh, I'm so glad they made me do that. So just, you know, I have um, a son in college and I'm always like, oh yeah, you got to look for those benefits. So I'm just being a mom right now. So those are important too. Start as early as you can. That is always beneficial. Absolutely. Um, so as far as professional development, what are some things like you talked about working under the nurse's license and having yeah. trainings for different stuff? What are some of the things I'm sure you have yearly CPR uh, mm -hmm. training, uh, just general stuff like that. But what is some of the, like the kind of professional development you guys do um, to help uh, assist with the uh, daily life of, of your people that you're working with? Okay, yeah, so we do, we have CPR, first aid, um, AED, exposure control. We have med passing that we redo every year, the nursing delegated task. So that's the insulin, catheters, I know I'm missing other things, all of that fun stuff. Right. Um, so, you know, if you're going to work with somebody who needs those supports, it's not just, oh, you have this one training and then you don't have another one for the rest of the year. Like our nurses are always completely available to, you know, come in and, and physically show you how to do anything that, you know, you're having problems with or just need a little more training on. We have um, another really important training we have is called MANT. And I think um, in the schools they might use CPI. I don't know if you that yeah so um i would say it's sim. the reason it's similar is because it teaches you um how to handle a very like a difficult situation right so that you don't just make decisions in the moment so that you're prepared but really we spend the first it's a three-day training three day all day long eight hour training so the first two days what it really teaches you is about building relationships with people and building rapport with people um, like I talked about earlier, antecedents and consequences and and I don't mean consequences like you're in trouble, but just what happens after you do what whatever that behavior is. Uh, setting events. Maybe I was stuck in a, a traffic jam for 20 minutes this morning before I got to work, so I might be a little irritated. So, you know, just learning about all of those different things that can have an influence on your behavior. And then, you know, how, yeah, and then how to build relationships with people. So the first two days is is all about that. Uh, yeah, so, so that is obviously really important, especially, you know, we've got folks who might have uh, trauma in their past. We have a lot of folks who have trauma in their past. So we have like trauma-informed care, like we do a lot of that as well, because touch can just, you know, like touching someone on the shoulder could really, like if you did that to me, I wouldn't, you know, have like, a, yeah, but for some of the people we support, it could be, you know, it could re-traumatize. So just learning all of those very important things. And then we also have some, some folks who, you know, I'd mentioned have maybe some mental health issues so uh, and then also, you know, coping mechanisms are something that that we a lot of us have learned, but maybe the folks we support either didn't have the opportunity to learn those or still in process of learning those. So, you know, if you think about someone who hasn't learned those instead of taking deep breaths or stepping out of the room, it might just be a ah. So, you know, we're also taught how to kind of handle difficult situations, handle uh, things being thrown at us, being bit, our hair pulled, our clothes pulled, bites, punches, kicks, all of those, all of those great things, which I will say, you know, I, you know, it, it's not often that that happens. And then also, of course, depends on who you're working with. Some people might be a little more aggressive than others. Uh, so we definitely learn that. So you're kind of prepared for those situations, of course. Oh uh, my gosh, what else do we have? Well, uh, also, we really 
like if you find a training that you think would be interesting or you think would help in in your work then they're all like they're more than happy to you know have you do those things for sure um they encourage trainings they encourage conferences they encourage seminars any of those things also johnson county has tuition reimbursement so let's say you come you come work with us at 18 and you're working an overnight and maybe you're going to school for psychology or nursing i don't know yeah then we do have tuition reimbursement so also good gosh i'm such a parent um but i that's really important too you know you you don't want to yeah have millions of dollars of debt for right. going to school that's very important to look at jobs that do have that tuition reimbursement to help Kind of like a scholarship but you're getting the real world experience of working while you're you're getting that money as well um what are some of the industry trends you've been seeing with working with people with disabilities as a uh, patient care yeah so i think i've been in in the industry long enough to kind of see things cycle around which okay. is interesting so when i first got into this you know 20 years ago it was work 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 and adults should be working adults should be working 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 so it was called empl the employment first initiative i believe so you know we were really trying to get everyone involved in working and making money which is great and fine but you know some people don't want to do that maybe they have uh maybe they have a, a trust and they don't need to work maybe they're you know independently wealthy and they don't need to work or for whatever reason so then you know we kind of came around to you know people living the life that they choose to live and that's really where i'm i'm stuck at like that's what i am here to do is to do whatever you want to do whatever within reason obviously but you know to really kind of to push that and if you want to work great i'm going to find you some somewhere to work and i'm going to make jigs is what we call them little you know, maybe somebody only has use of one arm. Well, then we'll make a jig that kind of helps be their other arm for them, for example. Yeah. So I'm going to find a way to do that. Um, if you want to go swimming, I'm going to find a way to do that, you know. So that's kind of where I've gotten stuck. But um, let's see. But then it's kind of like employment again now is is coming around again. Also, Another thing that I've noticed is, I mean, back in the day, it was, oh, you have a son or daughter with a disability, so they're going to need a guardian. So you're, you know, at once somebody turns 18, they're an adult, so they don't have a guardian. So it's like, you need somebody to make your decisions for you, so you need a guardian, and you go to the court, and voila, mom, dad, brother, sisters, now your guardian. Well, really, really, especially Kansas is getting away from that. So we call it supported decision making. So we all need some kind of support in making decisions in our life. Like, I don't know the most about, I, I don't know my finances, but you know, my aunt does really well. So she helps me or I consult her to make those decisions. Just like you and I would, someone just because they have a disability doesn't mean that I have to make that decision for them. They can, they can make that decision um, so it's really just getting away from, you know, the guardian, the guardianship and just putting in the supports that are needed for somebody to make certain decisions in their life, healthcare, money, daily living, you know, any kind of decisions. And then also Kansas, well, no, the fe federal handful of years ago, they have, they call the final rule. So it's kind of like getting away from congregate settings. So, you know, 30, 40, 50 years ago, the people that we support, a lot of a lot of them were in institutions. And I would recommend it's called Willowbrook. I don't know if you've heard that. It's a documentary. Oh, what's that TV talk show guy? Geraldo Rivera. Yeah. He he did it and it is disgusting and it makes my stomach hurt and it makes me angry. You know, it's from a million years ago, but, you know, people were in institutions and they were naked and there was feces on the floor and there was people were restrained and, you know, just like all of those things like 
people weren't treated as people. And um, I mean, if that doesn't light your fire, I don't know what will. But anywho, so, you know, of course, we want everyone to be integrated and we want everyone to be included in their community. So that is a big thing. Like, uh, you know, just we don't want to travel around in big groups of people like we're going on a field trip, you know, just right, because right. somebody has a disability doesn't mean, you know, I mean, just really focusing on the person and it's not that. So that's kind of like a really big thing now, which you wouldn't think would need to be a thing, but it's a thing. Yeah, absolutely. That makes a lot of sense. Um, what are some of your career goals you have maybe for the next 20 years? I don't know. <laughs> well, um, I'm also a charting the life course ambassador, so I would also suggest, uh, I think it's lifecourse.com, lifecoursetools.com. Just Google it, you'll find it. Is uh, So I became an ambassador the beginning of this year, I think. So it's really all about helping people to live their good life. And I think really that's kind of where I always come from. I don't care if I'm helping you live your best life, my kids, the people I support, my husband, whoever it is. And it's it's not for people with disabilities. It's not for, I mean, it's for everybody. So you can use the different tools and, you know, just their ideas of how how they think, not how they think, but how, yeah, it's, I, it's really beneficial. I would definitely recommend it. Um, so, what was the question? See, look, I just go off somewhere. For your goals. Okay. So, yeah, I want to continue to be a part of that. And actually, I've also, I've also joined the community of practice, which is people who are working on putting charting the life course and and that kind of framework into bills and policies and laws and the, actually the supported decision making in Kansas kind of came out of charting the life course. Um, so definitely that I want to be able to get that, you know, more embraced in Johnson County, you know, not just at JCDS, but for everybody, like we've got 4,000 or so employees, like it would be great, you know, just to be able to make sure everyone lives their good life and 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 support them in being able to do that so that's kind of my thing and i'm always like oh did you because they have different tools like a trajectory so you want to work on your trajectory to get to the things that you want or you know i was like did you do a trajectory for that like people are probably so sick of me saying those things but just a lot of visual things that they have which is pretty awesome so kind of like life coaching goal setting that kind of stuff yeah yeah that's cool um what's something you wish you would have known in high school or early on in college that would help you with your career now um i really just think it's you know getting involved in something and figuring out what what it is that you want to do i mean like i went to college you know just not knowing like oh i'm gonna go to baker like I was going to go to Cornell and I was going to go to Juilliard and I was going to go to all these places, but shoot, why not go to Baker? It's close to home, which was great. Loved the college. It was fantastic. But, you know, I, I don't really feel like I got like what you're doing now for the students. Like, how can I really take this and do something with it? Because really all I heard was, oh, it's psychology. You have to go on and get your master's or, you know, your doctorate to do anything with a psychology. Ha ha, a bachelor in psychology. And I mean, really, that's what we would kind of <laughs> joke about, but no. just really trying to, I don't know, just go out there. And I think this is going to be fantastic, like maybe volunteer Special Olympics, you know, come see me. And, you know, I mean, even if you want to go into healthcare, if you want to be a CNA, if you want to be an RN, an LPN, a doctor, a psychiatrist, you know, anything like that, like this is great. You have all of this experience that you're going to have, like you're going to be passing meds before you even step into your, you know, your first CNA class to work through your RN. So yeah, it JCDS gives you so much experience and so many different avenues because you're helping someone through their whole life. You're not just helping them 
with their meds. You're not just helping them with personal care. You're not just helping them find a job. It's like every single thing that they do all day long in their whole lifetime, that's what you're helping with. And I mean, think about the experience that that's going to get you. Just going out there and even if you don't like it, it and then that's fine. Then you're like, well, don't want to do that. I found that out when I was doing um, a practicum or internship with a therapist. I was like, oh, no. Right. Not so, you know, you can find things that you like, find things that you don't like, and then that really can just kind of help you figure it out. Ask people, ask your friends, parents, what do you do? What do you like about it? What do you not like about it? Just, yeah. Right. Yeah, that's a really good idea about asking friends, parents, because, I mean, that opens up your, your ideas to uh, quite a few different jobs that you may never heard of before. Yeah. Absolutely. Um, you kind of mentioned, like you said, Willowbrook. Um, going off that topic, what's a book that you would recommend to a high school or college age student that might be get interested in getting into uh, direct services? Gosh, I don't, I don't, I got nothing. I mean, honestly, I don't, I don't read, I don't read books. Um, I mean, we've got, I sent them to you just some realistic, you know, job preview type stuff. Huh. Um, I don't really know. Okay, about that's it. totally it's fine. A direct support professional, like I think lots of times, like if you, so when I, when I was hired, I was called a job coach because I worked with people in the day services, like I talked about, like working on their jobs. And then there's, you know, you might think of, of a direct support professional also is like a caregiver, which we do give care. We do do personal care. We do all of those things. And I kind of feel like when, when someone thinks about what do we do? We, oh, well, you give people showers and you take them to the bathroom. Well, yeah, I do that, but it's just so much more. And we're kind of this catharsis that's happening right right now within the last, I don't know, five or 10 years is getting away from the caregiver and to the direct support professional there. Um, oh, also might be important. They're working on making that a, at the federal level, like a, a job, like a, I don't even know what they call it, but like a job title. Right. So that it's like an actual thing and not just something that we made up. So that's kind of, so I'm sure that'll have positive implications for people you know coming up in the in the field as well so you kind of mentioned you know you, you people think that you just give showers and take people to the bathroom that kind of stuff are there any other uh misconceptions about the what a that profession will do with patient or with people they're in care of yeah when i was kind of thinking about it that was the biggest one i think that's definitely a big one. I think also that I'm not here to make decisions for the people that I support. Right. Um, a guardian doesn't make decisions for people that they're a guardian for. Like what our job is to what do you want to do and how can I support you in doing that? Or how can I advocate for you to be able to do that? So I think that's probably a misconception. You know, somebody with a disability, oh, they can't possibly make their own decisions. They can't possibly be independent and do any of those things, you know, and that's just the furthest thing from the truth. You know, some of the people who are the best self-advocates that I've ever met happen to have a disability. Well, I mean, we all have a disability, but, you know, happens to be somebody that we provide support to. And, and you know, everybody just wants to be heard and everybody wants to, you know, live the best life they can not just me and you like everybody wants to do that they all everybody does mm -hmm. uh, couple more questions uh do you have any products or tools that you use on a daily basis that help you uh with your daily job duties yeah lots of post-its <laughs> um i would say a direct support professional is not going to have time to sit down at a computer I mean, we have an electronic health record, so, you know, basic computer skills, you know, being able to put, you know, documentation into a computer and like, you know, check email and those kind of things, which seems really stupid to say now because that's what 
kids do now. We didn't, I didn't have email, okay, till I went to college. That's how old I am. Um, so yeah, definitely, definitely that. There also, you know, just never being really at the computer. You might have 30 minutes here, 15 minutes here on a good day. Um, so I always had like paper, pen, you know, so I could be taking notes. Um, like maybe I am in the bathroom with someone and they're doing their business and I would, you know, use that 15 minutes that I had to, you know, maybe make some case notes. So I, I know that sounds really dumb, like pen and paper, but you're, you're not at a computer. You're not, you know, you don't have your phone with you. So it's just, that's the best way to kind of keep a handle on everything that's going on really. Absolutely. Um, so this next one is kind of a two part question. Uh, first part is if you dislike blank, then being a direct support professional is not for you. Um, so I would say bodily fluids, vomit, poop, pee, you know, you name it. Um, seeing, seeing, um, other grownups naked. Yeah, definitely. Um, being touched. If you have a big personal space bubble might not be for you, but you know what? A week or two and you're going to be used to all that stuff. I right. mean, so I wouldn't even say if it's something that that you don't like or don't enjoy, you know, I would still, you know, give it a try. You know, you'll be, you know, conditioned to for it to not be a thing anymore. You know, the first, you know, same, same thing kind of goes through nursing and doctors. I've absolutely. Never that sort of stuff. Uh, yeah. The second part of the question is if you do like blank, then this is the right career path for you. Yeah. Um, I think seeing people, you know, learn new things, seeing people reach their goals, seeing people, yeah, just living the life that they want to and knowing that you had a hand in, in that, Right. then, you know, definitely. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, and then the last one I have is if you have a mantra or a quote that you kind of work through or live your life with. Yeah, I, well, one of the things like at work, like when I'm training new people or whatever, I'm always like, your job every day is to put yourself out of a job. So I guess what that kind of means is, you know, making or putting the supports and teaching and all of that to make the person that you're supporting as independent as they can be, like you're never going to be out of, out of a job but everything that you can do to put yourself out of a job is really what you should be doing. And I know that sounds kind of backwards. Um, and, and it does make sense. So you're trying to get them to give them the, the tools that they need to be able to live their life uh, effectively. Yeah. Uh, it is your job. Yeah. And having them have the most control over everything, even if it's maybe somebody who really can't use their hands. So, or their arms, and let's say, you know, you're assisting them with a shower. I'm probably going to have to really kind of do all of that, but I can still, you know, two different shampoos, you know, which one would you prefer? Which sounds dumb and little, but if you have no control over washing your own body, like having control over which shampoo you use is huge. Mm -hmm. um, or do you want the loofah or a sponge? I mean, just thinking about things like that, too. Uh, maybe you have somebody who, you know, never learned to tie their shoe. You know, fine, whatever. You're a 50-year-old man. I do not need to teach you how to tie your shoe. I mean, that's just like, who cares? Get get different shoes. Don't get those ugly Velcro shoes. But, there, you know, there's a bunch of a different adaptive clothes, adaptive shoes, like Target has stuff now, Kohl's has stuff now. So it's really, you know, more mainstream now. So get something that, you know, somebody can be independent or more independent and in putting on, you know, like all of that just kind of goes together. Um, and then I also say that that my job gives me a lot of opportunities to practice my patience. So yeah, because you know, people are stubborn. I'm stubborn. People are stubborn. Um, yeah, so, you know, they're, they're, 
yeah, just a lot of lots of opportunities to practice your patience for sure. And you're on their time, not on my time. You're, you know, this is their life, not mine. I'm just here to help them live it. Absolutely. So. Well, thank you so much for spending 50 minutes with us talking about Dr. Um, and what you're able to do with your, your patients and uh, helping them out throughout their lifestyle. Yeah, absolutely. It was fun. I love talking about what we do. It's so important. So.